As the two teams emerged from their locker rooms at halftime, it was clear that Washington had dominated the first half statistically. The Huskies had outgained the Ducks 208 to 55. Yet it was Rich Brooks's squad that had a one-point lead. Well, we knew we, we had to get uh, more offense uh, generated, and we had to keep doing a good job trying to contain Napoleon Kaufman and make sure we didn't give up big plays. And that was uh, the thing. And if we knew if we were able to accomplish that, w that we would have a great chance to come out with a win. I do remember uh, at the half thinking, well, we're at a really good place. Thankfully, the defense is playing some great football because, like you said, we haven't even moved the ball and uh, we have a 14-3 lead. It was pretty much all the defense at that point. Um, uh, I mean, all we did is when the defense gave us the ball in scoring position, we scored. Um, but, but we weren't able to move the ball. The defense was on the field way too long, and, um, and so we had to change something that second half or we weren't going to win the game. As the third quarter got underway, one thing became very clear. Both defenses had come to play. At the 8-yard line, first down and 16 now, goes back to throw. Flushed out of the pocket and overthrows Eric Bjornsson. Freshman in there at center for Oregon. And the pitch back, they want to throw it. Ricketts can't. Brought down at the 48-yard line. And back is Hewitt. He's going to run, and he's going to be dumped in the backfield again. Bryant Jackson got him in the backfield. Right after him. The Ducks backed up again, second and 19. O'Neill wants to throw the screen, and he runs it to, you know, Bill Yaw. Eager to add to their slim lead, Danny O'Neill and the Oregon offense finally found some rhythm. You're right. That's the way the polls have gone all year. O'Neill under pressure and has Griffith, who has good speed, over the middle. And inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. So Matt Bellman in for a 46-yard field goal attempt. As long as 47 on the year. And it's good. While Oregon was unable to score a touchdown on the drive, a field goal gave them a 17-13 lead. Although four points was a slim margin, Coach Brooks had confidence that his defense could hold the Huskies at bay. We had players on the defensive side that were uh, seasoned uh, veterans, uh, Chad Cota, and Jeff Sherman at safety were outstanding players, and we had O'Berry and uh, Molden at corner that were also great players. And we had a young freshman by the name of Kenny Wheaton that had made some big plays uh, earlier in the season. Yards total in this game yet, and you can score 17 points with less than 100 yards. That's maximizing your offense. Here's Kaufman on the right side. It's ahead for three. That's it. Well, I think Oregon's probably going to bring as much pressure as they can because that's that's been their pattern so far in this game. Two tight ends in, Conwell and Bruner, and a deep drop for Ewart. And he has Eric Bjornsson out there, and Bjornsson can't hold on to it. Third and three. Here they come. And Coffin stops as Oregon's defense comes up with a big third down play. Three quarters were over, and the Ducks' lead was still holding if only by a thread. The fourth quarter is set to get underway. Oregon leading 17 to 13 here at Oxen Stadium in Eugene, Oregon. Third and long, third and about nine. And O'Neill back under pressure. Got to get rid of it. And does. It bounces off of Jones and intercepted. Reggie Reeser down the near sideline and now he loses the football. And out of bounds at the 23, Washington will have it there. A pass that was tipped by the fullback Dwayne Jones and Reggie Reeser picked it off. And what a huge turnaround for the Huskies right now. For O'Neill, the interception brought back haunting memories of the previous year's game. One in which Washington picked off Oregon's quarterback six times. That 93 game was uh, one of the lowest parts of my career, obviously. Um, you know, you throw, you basically lose the game for your team. And that changed me as a person and as a quarterback uh, because I had two options. I could either go hide, I could either, you know, just kind of have my career, you know, fall down, or I can respond. And I chose after that game you know, to respond and, and uh, to play to play great football from, from then on out. A mistake by the Ducks 
and Washington was in prime real estate, looking to turn the interception into points. Not done a whole lot on first down. No, that's right, they haven't. Thomas and Kaufman in the backfield and toward the throw. Out to his tight end, that's number 85, Mark Bruner. Near a first down. Only the second catch of the day for Bruner, an All-American tight end. And get even more yards than that. So first and 10 at the 18th. Kaufman bouncing outside. Looking for room. And down to the 16-yard line. Talented. And made improvements this year in his all-around game. Here's a give to the fullback and a touchdown for Richard Thomas. Straight ahead running. And Washington pulls ahead. The Huskies had taken a 20-17 lead. And with under eight minutes remaining, the Ducks offense, that had struggled for most of the game, would have to drive 98 yards for the victory. Coming up, the offensive fireworks begin to fly as the game comes down to one final drive. At the 18, and he's got room across the 35 to the 37. They're right in that end zone, too. That's where the fans are. And what a task to ask for this Oregon offense to go 98 yards when they've only managed six first downs this entire game. The clock was ticking away on Oregon's hopes of victory. Following a turnover and a quick Husky score, the Ducks were down by three and needed to drive 98 yards to retake the lead. I remember the sinking feeling after Washington had scored and they kick off and I thought there's still plenty of time on the clock and the Ducks can drive. They can do it. They hadn't yet, but you never give up. And the kick received at the two yard line and in, instead of getting up the field, and I, I can't remember, I want to say who, who downed the ball, but Took, took the kick off and his knee went down at the two yard line. And it was a sinking feeling of, oh no, worst possible scenario. The only way it could have been worse is if you fumble the ball and the Huskies get it. Now you got seven minutes left in the game and you got to go 98 yards and you haven't done it the whole game. Never give up hope, but wow, it looks, it looks very dim. Now what a bad break for Oregon too. 740 left and they're right in that end zone. I can remember on the sideline, Mike Bellotti, uh, was calling the play through the, the headset and he said, well, maybe we should give it to the fullback up the middle. Uh, and I said, you know, no, we're going to drop back and throw it. And let's, let's go for it and get it out of the hole. When I looked at 10 other guys in that offensive huddle and there wasn't anybody, you know, looking around like, what are we going to do? Is everybody looking right at me? It's go time. Play action for O'Neal. And he's got Ricketts at the 18 and he's got room. Across the 35 to the 37, and a big play for Danny O'Neill to Dameron Ricketts. My first memory goes to uh, being in the sideline uh, with Coach Coach Pilotti and uh, hearing Coach Brooks say over the headsets uh, to Coach Pilotti, who was the offensive coordinator, "Hey, let's throw the ball." So that kind of that kind of excited me. All right, we're going to we're going to throw this ball right now, and uh, it was perfect because we had a play action pass. I forgot how many yards we we gained. Got down there, you know, out of our own end zone, and we're off and running. So we got out of the, the shadow of our end zone, and I think that sent a message as well to our team that we weren't here just to, to try to conserve and to try to play close to the best. We, we, had, to, we had to go try to win this thing. Often they have to convert, get some points on this drive, otherwise it'd be real tough to come back in this game. Three receivers in for O'Neill. And he throws to Pat Johnson, he has the catch, and he has a first down at the 49. And there's an example of Johnson running the right route. He ran far enough to get the first down. Numbers getting better for uh, Danny O'Neill now. First down at the 49, he's got Ricketts open at the 40. And he drives Reeser down to the 30-yard line. A gain of 21 on the play. And you got to look at the strength of Hammer and Ricketts. You look at the highlights you always see these extra efforts through the whole game you know Dameron Ricketts carrying people on his back um, you know I fought for a first down at one point well and a big third down up we've had a bunch of them here's O'Neal and he's got room to scramble has to get to the 19 and stretches ahead with the football and we'll see where they spot it what a great effort by Danny O'Neal to get there and he's got it so the drive's alive Oregon had got a rhythm going and they made a few really big plays and we're getting the ball, they got it across the 50, they got it inside the 40 
and you're beginning to realize that the Huskies are on their heels a little bit, and, and maybe, maybe this was going to be the time that the Ducks were going to break through. Third down and three. A long count by O'Neal. And out of Jones, the fullback straight ahead. He's got a first down and a touchdown. That was actually an option play where I had a whole bunch of different options. It was uh, really an options, you know, running an option where I actually, you know, take the ball out and we do an option right or left. It was actually the main play. But I can also, if they're, out, if they're playing those options, I can give it to our fullback. But I hadn't called that play all year. I mean, you, you line up, I'm always taking the ball and running the option one way. Uh, but they gave it to us right down the middle. They were just kind of lined up in a way, where's Dwayne Jones? So I, I called his play, called his number. We, we thought when Oregon scored that touchdown to go ahead, it was the loudest we would ever hear on the stadium. Well, it, it was, uh, it went crazy, obviously, uh, and and certainly uh, uh, the, uh, the handoff to the fullback up the middle, I think, caught the Huskies off guard, and, and uh, we score the touchdown, and the place goes nuts. I think O'Neal had a lot to do with that. When you talk about his maturity, uh, I think he was a guy that that kind of rallied the troops around and and didn't let them believe they couldn't take the ball 98 yards and score that touchdown and win that game. The enthusiasm in Autzen was cautious, however, as the high-powered Washington offense took to the field with under three minutes to play. Plenty of time for another game-winning drive. Coming up, the Huskies look to make an epic march and break the Ducks' hearts. A touchdown run by Dwayne Jones, and the Ducks had capped off a 98-yard drive for the ages. The score now read 24 to 20. For Danny O'Neill and his teammates, emotions were running high. You always hear people say it's hard to describe, but I mean, it's really hard to describe when you just came 98 yards against the ninth-ranked team in the nation, your rival, you know, in the in the, in part of the fourth quarter, and get past that line. It's a uh, it's an amazing emotion, but I gotta tell you, I mean, you had that emotion for about five, ten seconds, and then you look up at the clock and look at that time, and now you're you're fighting for something great. Two minutes and forty seconds remained for one of the nation's top offenses. The jubilation of Jones's touchdown was quickly replaced with nervous tension. Then the anxiety, I think, started to take over because the Huskies had come back and, and defeated us uh, several times at Autzen Stadium when we had taken the lead late in the game. And they kick it to Kaufman this time. From his eight out to the 24-yard line. They have put 20 points on the board, but this is the time right now where if you're Damon Hewitt, you got to win it. York to Bjornsson on the far side, knocked out of bounds at the 32. And the Oregon defense has really come up with big play after big play, stopping Washington Drive. And another big third down play right here. Well, Hewitt has two timeouts. He doesn't have to get the whole 10 yards here, and he's going to have two downs to work. A lot of time. Mark Bruno, the intended receiver, the tight end, and broken up by Isaac Walker. He was there, along with Herman O'Barrett. Facing a fourth and ten on their own 45-yard line, the Huskies were in desperate need of a big play. Down to this fourth and ten. Could be the ball game. Fourth down and ten at the 45. Johnson with the catch at the 31-yard line. And he's got a Washington first down. Well, when they started the drive, it was noisy, trying to help Oregon's defense. A gain of 14 on the play, and they are still alive. Then as Washington just sort of worked their way down the field and that big fourth down conversion really took the air out of the, out of the fans. And it, it started getting a little quieter. Third down and ten. How many times have we said that today? A big third down play for the Huskies. A lot of time. 
And Hewitt out of the pocket to the near sideline. And gets to the first down at the 20-yard line. That was a, a bad moment for me because, you know, you're on the sideline. You're just watching this go down, keep getting first down and first down and first down. Um, that, that, was a, that, was just, that was just a bad time to, to be watching a football game. Their own 25-yard line. Second and 10. Ruder with the catch at the 10-yard line and inside the 10 to the 8 and another Husky first down. And the realization when they got inside the 10-yard line, Napoleon Kaufman, Oregon, really hadn't been able to stop him much that, that day. The Husky offense was rolling. Time was running out. Here we go. It's going to happen again. Backed up against their own end zone, the Ducks were on their last line of defense. For defensive coordinator Nick Aliotti, reading the Huskies was a guessing game. They could throw the ball with Damon Heward or hand off to star running back Napoleon Kaufman. Nick Aliotti is calling for timeout. What you They're on the eight. And I'm saying to myself, wow. They're going to give this ball to Napoleon Kaufman. If I'm there, I'm going to give the ball to Napoleon Kaufman. We're coming with an all-out blitz, and we're playing man-to-man -man on the outside. Following an Oregon timeout, third-string cornerback Kenny Wheaton re-entered the game, the same freshman who had been burned two quarters earlier by Eric Bjornsson. But what Wheaton may have lacked in experience, he made up for in football IQ. When we were in nickel defense, we had our third corner in, which was Kenny Wheaton. Uh, a freshman and he uh, was a very smart football player and did a lot of film study. And Kenny Wheaton, who had studied film all weeks, knew that when they got down there that the receiver, their inside receiver, would run an out. In fact, Kenny said if he ran an in, it'd be a touchdown coach because I was ready to jump the out all week. We thought the ball was going to go to, to Kaufman. And when Heward turned and it was a play fake, uh, we're just trying to figure out who's open. Have we got the field covered? Is this going to be the touchdown? Can the Ducks make a play, knock the ball down, uh, just looking for something to happen? Heward under pressure. We saw the pass go. And everything's in slow motion. Heward under pressure. And picked off at the four-yard line. Oregon with the interception, and down the sideline goes Kenny Wheaton. He may score. There's no one near him. Kenny Wheaton. And what an ending. The pick is known as a pick for very good reasons. It was the most amazing play, you know, in the moment in football. He picked it off, I think, about the three and started running down the sideline toward our bench. And everybody up there, including me, was just, get down, get down, get down. He didn't get down. He came back, made a cut. Damon Heward missed him, and he ran it in for a touchdown. Game over. There's no one near him. Kenny Wheaton. That probably is the single greatest play in the history of Oregon football. I, people can argue, but I don't care. I've been here a long time. I've seen a lot of it. That play meant so much. It was one of the more exciting, uh, spine-tingling moments, I think, that I've experienced in a, in a long coaching career. When you do what we do uh, for so long, and the blood, sweat, and tears that people put into games and the tough games that you go through, um, Euphoria. I mean, just cloud nine. Whew, I get emotional when I talk about it because it's a turning point in Oregon's history that if it doesn't occur when Kenny Wheaton picks that ball, I don't know if we're sitting here today talking about Oregon's successes, where they are now, and national championship potential. That was a that was an unbelievable moment. The pick will always be remembered in Oregon lore, but perhaps even more memorable, the call by Ducks play-by-play -play announcer, Jerry Allen. You are going to go back to throw the ball. Sets up, looks, throws toward the corner of the end zone. It is intercepted! Intercepted! The Ducks have the ball! Down to the 35, the 40. Kenny Wayton's going to score! Kenny Wayton is going to score! Play! That's it! Touchdown! Kenny Wayton! And 
interception! The most improbable finish to a football game! I'm a professional, and you're taught to be in control and do a professional job. When he intercepted that ball, I lost control, I became a fan. And I was doing <laughs> probably what all the fans were doing at the time was jumping up and down and yelling, forgetting that I'm broadcasting the ball game. I'm just yelling that Kenny Wheaton's gonna score, Oregon's gonna score. I think his, his response was perfect. I mean, if you're an Oregon fan for the last 15, 20 years, and you're a diehard Oregon fan even the last few years, I mean, that pick changes the entire fabric of your enjoyment of football. For the commentators in the Washington broadcast booth, the pick was remembered quite differently. Two of the dirtiest words, I think, in, in Husky football annals, Kenny Wheaton. Some of the things I was thinking you certainly cannot say uh, on, on the air without uh, uh, some sort of uh, punishment. You can't make big mistakes against a team like that. It was horrible to uh, watch a interception be run 80-some yards. It seemed like 180 yards to me watching the them run our out route back. You just knew Washington was going to go win that game, and that's what Washington does. They go down, and you know, you had Napoleon Kaufman available. Uh, you know, Damon throwing the football. He'd had some success earlier on in the game. Uh, certainly, they would go win the game, but uh, they went to a little fade route that they uh, they like so well. Damon uh, throwing it for the left corner of the end zone, and Kenny Wheaton picking it off about the two or three yard line, and clear sailing the other way for a a signal moment, maybe the defining moment in Oregon football history. And then just for my satisfaction, they have replayed that, <laughs> that play every year that I, I've been down around there. Uh, uh, that thing keeps coming up and, and it's like shooting me in the head again. <laughs> As the final seconds ticked off, the score read 31 to 20 Oregon. The Ducks had finally beaten Washington. What a win for the Oregon Ducks. Oregon is one of those communities where kids grow up in that town going to Oregon football. I mean, certainly you have kids going to all throughout the program, but I mean, in that small community, that's, that's what all these kids know. I mean, you have some people that their whole life they've been watching Oregon, and that one pick kind of encapsulated for them or was the, was the one play for them that made it all worth it. We beat the Huskies, you know, ranked ninth in the nation. Despite big wins over Ohio State and Miami early, the loss to Oregon resonated deeply with Washington and their fans. Oregon had beaten Washington on occasion prior to that, and uh, I'm sure Husky fans were just thinking this this was going to be that kind of occasion. We'll give them their one, and and things will be different after that. Of course, we, we know differently now. But bear in mind, too, that was a good Oregon football team. That was a team that went to the Rose Bowl, for heaven's sake. And a uh, good competitive team, but uh, still a game that uh, all of us think Washington should have won. Without prospects of going to a bowl game, the Huskies limp through the remainder of the season, dropping games to Stanford and bitter rival Washington State. Yet Jim Lambright remained positive and confident his team would turn things around. While the NCAA sanctions were lifted, Lambright was never able to recapture the magic of the Don James era. Following a 6-6 six and six season in 1998, the man who had played and coached at Washington since 1962 was finally let go. Jim is a really good friend of mine, and it was uh, and has taught me more football than uh, than I can tell you. Uh, tough situation to begin, and uh, sorry to see it end as it did. I think people lost a little faith in, in Jim's ability to, to put Washington where it uh, needed to be. Having said that, in the context of uh, the most recent decade or so of, of Husky football, Jim Lamprecht's record was pretty darn good, and uh, certainly he could go away from this program with his head held high. For the Ducks, the victory over the Huskies was the turning point of the season as they reeled off four straight victories to win their first Pac-10 championship since 1954 and earn their first spot in the Rose Bowl since 1958. When you put so much into something and, and, you, and, and you finally, you're going to go to the Rose Bowl for the first time in a lot of years, and Oregon, you know, who had been a doormat for so long, uh, I don't know if I could express it in words other than to say that it was one of the greatest feelings I've ever had as a football coach. It, it was a spectacular season, and it's something that Oregon fans had waited for, it seems, forever. 
and, and when you watch year in and year out the UCLA's and the USC's and, and at the time the Washington's and the Penn State's and the Ohio State's and everybody else celebrating at the end of the year and then you realize we're going to do that this year. The Ducks had made it to the granddaddy of them all and while a loss to Joe Paterno's undefeated Penn State squad spoiled a dream ending, the 1994 season was the genesis of a positive shift for Oregon football. When we walked into the Rose Bowl uh, out there in the pregame and saw half of that bowl filled with, with uh, the green and the yellow, it was just a phenomenal feeling of, of pride uh, to think that we had uh, finally uh, brought the team back to where they had been many, many years ago, 1957, obviously, and, uh, and accomplished something that none of the previous teams had done. Our group of guys, we stepped up, we overcame challenges, and we became the Pac-10 champions. I think of the guys I fought with and battled with each week. Uh, that, that's my greatest memory of 1994, not, not, where it, not where it plays in the history of the program, uh, but I think about it singly as that season with a group of guys and the coaches and people that support us, we accomplished something great at that, that year. For Duck football fans, the pick serves as not only one of the greatest plays in their football history, but the singular moment that reshaped Oregon football forever. I think they equate that play with that season and that great group of young men that set the foundation of championship football for the University of Oregon. The Oregon Ducks win the 98th Rose Bowl. You always have that great feeling of accomplishment and just what it felt and what it meant to this program. Uh, like I said, I think that that play is the single biggest, most important play in the history of Oregon football. Throw the ball, sets up, looks, throws toward the corner of the end zone. It is intercepted! Intercepted! The Ducks have the ball! Down to the 35, the 40! Kenny Wayne's gonna score! Kenny Wayne's gonna score! Kenny